Hello everyone. In this session, we will learn how to analyze business transaction, a foundational skill for any financial accounting 101 course or basic accounting course. I cannot emphasize how crucial, how important this topic is. If you cannot properly analyze a transaction, you cannot record it properly. So what does analyzing a transaction mean? Simply put, it involves understanding what happened in this business transaction. I will guide you through a three-step systematic approach to analyzing transaction. By following those three steps, you will find it much easier to break down and understand each transaction. In this session, we will focus on identifying which accounts are affected, whether they went up or they went down. Later, we would learn about how to record these changes properly through a debit and credit system. Remember, this is the foundation for everything else. If you don't grasp this topic properly, don't go forward. Because if you cannot analyze a transaction, you will find difficulty recording the transaction using debits and credits. So take your time, practice as many transactions as you can until you get comfortable. And remember, after each transaction, you will see the accountant equation will remain in balance. At the end of the session, we will work a multiple choice questions to kind of put this together. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. Let's start by learning about the three steps in analyzing transactions. I made those three steps to help you in a systematic way analyze transaction. It will be easier for you to have a systematic way in analyzing transactions eventually those three steps will become a second nature to you, but initially it's very important that you go through each step separately. Starting with step one, ask yourself what happened. In other words, do you understand the nature of the transaction? Do you understand what actually happened? Can you explain the transaction to someone else? If you can do that, you can answer what happened. Now, as you are explaining the transaction, you need to identify which accounts, at least two accounts in every transaction, are affected. So you would, you would identify two accounts at least. Now why two accounts? You're going to see later we have the double entry accounting. After you determine which accounts are affected, you need to classify them. What do I mean by classify them? I'm going to tell you in a moment. So when you identify the accounts, look for the word cash, pay, and receive. If you see the word cash, it means cash is one of the accounts. Cash is an account. That's easy. If you see the word cash, that's easy. If you see the word pay, it's also cash. If you see the word receive, it's also cash. So whether you pay, receive, or the word cash, you identified one of the two accounts, at least one of the two accounts, which make it easy for you to identify the other accounts. And once it's an application, I would remind you, then you classify the accounts. How do you classify them? For example, if cash is involved, you would say cash is an asset. If cash and accounts payable are involved, you would say accounts payable is a liability. If cash and supplies are involved, supplies is an asset. If you have cash and revenues, revenues is the other account. You might have cash and expenses. You might have cash and common stock. You might have some two combination of accounts. But if you if cash is involved, it's going to make the transaction much easier. And initially in financial accounting, I would say 80% of the transaction go through the cash account, which make it easier for you to analyze. Then you determine the directional impact. Did the account go down? Did the account go up? Because you identify two accounts what happened to these two accounts? Maybe both of them went down. Maybe both of them went 
the up maybe one went up one went down this is the direction now the best way to illustrate these steps is to start to analyze actual transaction and I'm gonna start with transaction one and every time there is there is a company being created the first entry is an investment by the owner let's look at the first transaction Adam Farhat invest $40,000 cash to start a corporation named Farhat Lectures. This is how a business will start. An investor, an entrepreneur, in this situation, Adam, invest. They invested $40,000 in a business called Farhat Lectures. It's going to be abbreviated FL. Now, do you understand what happened? I just told you what happened. Adam decided to start a business and invested money in his business. That's what happened. Identify the accounts that are affected. Well, I see the word cash. Cash is one of these accounts. What type of an account is cash? Asset. I classified it. When the owner invests money in the business, the owner gives out cash to the business, they receive in return common stock ownership. And we talked about common stock. Common stock is an equity account. From a business perspective, cash went up and the equity of the business went up. So cash went up, equity went up. Let me show you how we show this under the accounting equation. Under the accounting equation, we have assets increasing by 40,000. We have under common, under equity, under equity, we have common stock increasing by 40,000. If we look at total assets equal to 40,000, equal to liabilities, which are zero, plus 40,000. And this is a sample of the accountant equation. Now let's talk about the accountant equation. In the prior session, we explained the accountant equation. The accountant equation keeps the numbers in balance. Assets equal to liabilities plus equity. That's how it works. It keeps it in balance. Well, after each transaction, double check yourself. Are my assets equal to liabilities plus equity? And the answer is yes at this point. Let's look at transaction number two. The company, which is Farhat Lectures, purchased supplies, paying 2,200 cash from office supplies. So they purchased supplies from office supplies. Do you understand what happened? Yes, Farhat Lecture, the company, purchased supplies, paying cash. Well, we need supplies. We need papers for the printers. We need pencils. We need ink. We need all sorts of supplies to run the company. Which accounts are involved? Well, I see the word cash. Cash is involved. What did I buy? Well, I gave out cash, right? What did I get in return? I got supplies. So the other account that's involved is supplies, cash and supplies. Classify cash, cash is an asset. Classify supplies, supplies is an asset. So I, ex I exchange one asset called cash with another asset called supplies. What happened to my cash account? My cash account went down. What happened to my supplies? I purchased more supplies, supplies went up. Therefore, cash went down and supplies went up. This is what happened in this transaction. Let me show you what it would, what it would look like under the accountant equation. Under the accountant equation, cash will go down, supplies will go up. Let me run my balances now. Initially, I had $40,000 in cash. I spent 2,200 on supplies. What's left in cash is 37,800. I had zero supplies. Now I have 2,200. And my common stock, I did not affect my common stock. I did not affect my liabilities. 40,000 of assets still equal to 40,000 of liabilities and equity. Transaction three, for hat lectures, purchase equipment for $26,000 cash from IBM. Let's start with the easy part. We paid cash. So the company gave up cash. They received in return equipments, maybe computer equipment, supercomputers. Well, cash is an asset. Equipments is an asset. We have less cash, more equipment. So the two accounts that are involved are cash going down, which is an asset, and equipment, which is an asset going up. Let's take a look at this transaction from the accountant equation perspective. Cash went down, equipment went up. Now we have cash, 11,800. 
which is 40,000 minus 2,200 minus 26,000 supplies 2,200 equipment 26 a total of 40,000 nothing happened under liabilities and we still have $40,000 of common stock that we issued initially for hat lectures purchase additional supplies of 5,100 credit from office supplies what happened is this we made additional purchases of supplies so supplies went up we have more supplies why because we purchase supplies supplies is an asset that much we know what's the other account that's affected it doesn't it doesn't show anywhere here that we paid cash we made this purchase on credit on credit means we promise to pay we promise to pay it means we have a liability if we made a promise to pay we have to pay in the future because we purchased something and we're gonna be paying for it later what we did is we exchange a promise with an asset accounts payable is is the other account so simply put we received supplies we gave them a promise promise to pay the promise to pay is an accounts payable and we have more of accounts payable we have more of liabilities so supplies went up which is an asset accounts payable which is a liability also went up let's show this on the accountant equation we have more supplies but now we have more liabilities and specifically accounts payable therefore assets are 45,100 notice we have 5,100 more in assets than what we started with because up to this point up until transaction 3 we only had $40,000 of assets now we have 45,100 why because we acquired more supplies without sacrificing cash what did we do we incurred a liability now we have more liabilities therefore liabilities plus equity equal to 45,100 total assets equal to total liabilities and equity now notice at this point I want you to notice the only equity transaction the only equity transaction is common stock that's the only equity transaction we went through remember under equity we have revenues we have expenses we have dividend now let's take a look at transaction that influence our equity Farhat lectures provided consulting services to a customer and received 4,500 cash right away so what happened is this we did some work consulting services so what did we give up we give up work we give up our time we give up our expertise what did we get in return 4,500 cash cash is an asset and we have more of it work when we do work for someone when we do the work that's called revenues and revenues remember revenues is under the umbrella of equity we have more revenues so we have more cash and more equity which is revenues so cash went up and revenues which is an equity also went up and this is the best thing that a business can do this is the best best thing this is the best thing that a business can do provide a service receive the cash provide a service receive the cash equity goes up cash goes up this is what businesses do this is what they like to do provide services provide work for customers and in return the customer pays immediately so now what we have is 4,500 more in cash 4,500 more in revenues and all the balances are from the prior are from the prior slide which is we had 11,800 in cash 7,300 in supplies and 26,000 in equipment now when we add up all the assets now we have assets of 49,600 we have an additional 4,500 in asset but we generated this asset from revenue and this is really good really really good why because we want to grow our equity we want to grow our equity by generating more revenues more uh, more work we want to we want to do work increase our cash and increase our equity Farhat lectures paid rent of 1200 and salaries of 500 to employees well what happened well Farhat lectures needed some help 
So they hired someone and they paid them $500. They also needed to rent maybe a space, maybe a piece of equipment. They rented something for $1,200. And they paid it. When we pay, it means cash went down. Cash went down. Now, we gave up cash. We paid cash. What did we got in return? Well, we got in return services. Services means what? We incurred an expense. We got some value of rent and expense, uh, rent expense and employees. Definitely cash went down. Cash is an asset. What are the other accounts that are affected? Well, we paid rent. rent. We have rent expense and we have salaries expense. Here's what I want you to know about expenses. Expenses always, always, always if you want to write this down, expenses always go up. And you're going to thank me in the next chapter. Expenses always go up. Okay? Now, the expense account goes up. How does expenses influence equity? That's a different question. It brings equity down. So expenses in account goes up, but it's going to bring equity down. This is how expenses and equity are related to each other. And we talked about this in the prior session. Expenses reduces equity. Revenue increases equity. And by the way, revenues always go up, just like expenses. Now, we're going to see later at some point, both revenues and expenses go down. But don't worry about this now. Once we get to that point, it will be easier for you to understand that point. So for now, just remember, expenses always go up, but they are going to reduce total equity. From the accountant equation perspective, we have cash going down in total of 1,700, expenses going up. Remember, the parentheses is to reduce equity. Expenses as an account usually don't go down unless someone make a mistake and they're refunding you the money because you paid for something an error. Here, notice what happened to total assets. Total assets are 47,900, which is less 1,700 than before because we used up the asset and our liabilities and equities went down also by 1,700 because we incurred expenses. Let's take a look at this transaction. Farhat Lectures provided consulting services of 1,800 and rented facilities for 200 to a customer owned credit. What happened? Farhat Lectures did more work, provided consulting services. What does that mean? It means we generated more consulting revenues. In addition to that, we rented some facilities. I don't know, maybe a piece of equipment for $200 to a customer on credit. What does that mean? It means we provided the service. So we provided services or work. That's great. What do we expect to receive in return? We expect to receive cash. Did this customer pay cash? No. We provided the service on credit. We got in return a promise. That's what we got in return. Promise to be paid. What do we call the promise to be paid? We call this from an accounting perspective, accounts receivable. And accounts receivable is an asset. So accounts receivable as an asset went up, and this is the revenue recognition at work. Remember, when we provide the service, we can recognize the revenue. We have consulting revenue worth of how much? The consulting revenue is worth 1,800. We also have rental revenue. We provided rent revenue of 200. Together, they're going to bring account receivable by 2,000. So we did the work, but the customer did not pay yet. That's fine. We're going to increase our assets by 2000 specifically account receivable, and we are going to increase our revenues by 2000 Now, our assets are growing again. We're back to 49900 and our, our equity is growing again to 49900 Let's look at transaction 9. The client in transaction 8 paid 2000 for consulting services to Farhat Lectures. So the client in transaction 8 paid the $2,000, for the consulting services. So if we go back to transaction eight, we did the work, we generated the revenue, and we got a promise. Guess what happened next? The customer paid that promise. 
paid that promise. So if they paid, we received cash. So cash went up. Now, what did we get in return? We didn't really get anything in return. All what we do at this point is since they made the promise and they make good on their promise, our account receivable will go down. Another asset will go down. So cash goes up, account receivable goes down. The common mistake here for students is they assume there's more revenues. No, no revenues. The revenues took place in the prior transaction. Therefore, cash went up, account receivable went down. And notice, nothing else have, has happened. The, the total assets are still 49,900. And total equity is 49,900. Hold on a second. We just received an additional $2,000 in cash. Why didn't our assets or equity went up? Because we received the cash, which is an asset. One asset went up, but this payment was against account receivable. So cash went up, account receivable went down. Our balance in account receivable is zero. Therefore, we still have a total asset of 49,900, equity 49,900, because equity did not change. Let's take a look at this transaction. Farhat Lectures pays $1,000 as a partial payment for supplies purchased in transaction four. I'm going to go back to transaction four and show you what happened in transaction four. In transaction four, if you don't remember, we purchased supplies from office supplies, I believe, and worth of 5,100. We made a partial payment. Did we pay the full amount? No, we paid how much? We paid 1,000 of the 5,100. We paid only 1,000 of that. Well, if we paid 1,000 of that, which accounts are affected? Let's start with the easy part. We paid cash, cash is affected. What type of account is cash? Cash is an asset. So let's analyze this transaction. So we have cash, start with cash, cash going down, cash is an asset. So we gave up cash. What did we get in return? We got in return a reduction in the accounts payable. We are paying off our bill. Accounts payable as a liability. Therefore, cash goes down. That's fine. Our liabilities goes down as well. They both go down, which is good. We're paying off our debt. Think about if you have a loan. Yes, when you have a loan, you pay that loan. Your asset goes down. You don't like this but your liability goes down by the same amount. You would like that. So together, if we look at the accounting equation, assets goes down, accounts payable go down as well. Let's take a look at the balances now. Now we have 48,900 of assets. We have less $1,000, but also our liabilities go down by 1,000 as a result. Total liabilities and equity goes down by 1,000 to 48,900. Let's take a look at transaction 11. Adam Farhat withdrew $500 cash from Farhat Lectures for personal use. Well, let's start with the easy account. Cash is influenced. Cash is an asset. Cash went down because cash is leaving the business. Now, cash is leaving the business for, for what purpose? For personal use. Personal use, we call this dividend. When you take money out of the business, when the owner takes money out of the business, remember Adam is the owner, we call this a withdrawal. It's classified under dividend. Dividend is an equity account. Dividend, just like expenses, they always go up. However, from an equity perspective, dividend reduces equity. So let's take a look at, at this transaction from a accounting equation perspective. Cash goes down. Dividend goes up, but as a result, it brings down equity. Now, our, our assets are $500 less, $48,400. Our liabilities and equities are $48,400. How, how do we do this? Well, you add up all the assets. Let's add them up to make sure we get this. $15,100 plus $7,300 plus 26,000, and that's going to be 40, 48,400. When it comes to liabilities and equities, we'll take 4,100, 4,100 plus 40,000 minus 
500 plus 6,500 minus 1,700 and that's equal to 48,400. So those are, we're going to call these the ending balances. And this is a summary of all the transaction that we went through. Those are the ba ending balances and we're going to need those for the next session. Those are the assets, liability, common stock 40,000, dividend 5,500, revenue 6,500, expenses 1,400. Those are the ending balances for each account. Now, ending balances. A company can run this ending balance at the end of every month, at the end of every quarter, at the end of every year, at any period they want to. Those are the ending balances that we will be using to prepare the financial statements in the next session. So in the next session, I would say, you know, this is a summary of the transaction that we worked with. Now we are going to prepare the financial statements. But before we prepare the financial statements, let's take a look at this multiple choice question from FarhatLectures.com. Purchasing equipment on account, it means payment to be made in the future. When we say on account or on credit, means we will pay in the future. Will have what effect on the component of the accounting equation? So what happened if we purchase equipment on account? Is it A, increase in equipment? Yes, which is an asset. A decrease in equity. Do we decrease equity? No. We purchase equipment. Decreasing equity is when you have an expense, when you have a dividend. A asset went up. The corresponding other account is not a decrease in equity. I would say A is out. Increase in equipment. That's correct because we have more equipment. And increase in equity. That will be nice. If you can increase equipment and increase equity, <laughs> that will be really nice. Uh, I mean, it could happen. How would that happen? Let's assume someone pay you, you performed work for someone and they pay you, they pay you rather than pay you cash, they give you a piece of equipment. Your asset goes up and your equity goes up. Is this what happened here? No, there was an increase in equipment, but not an increase in equity. That would have been nice. An increase in equipment asset, that's correct. And an increase in liabilities, is this correct? Yes, we purchase equipment on credit. So if equipment went up, which is assets, the other side of the transaction will be accounts payable went up, which is a liability. So asset went up, increase in asset and increase in liability. Let's look at D, increase in asset, that's correct. A decrease in liabilities, that will be nice. We have more assets and less liabilities. by it. So we keep on acquiring equipment. <laughs> the more equipment we acquire, the less liabilities we have. That will be nice, but that's not, that, that's not possible. That's not even a realistic transaction. <laughs> that will be nice. You have more assets and less liabilities in the same transaction. That does not work. So C is the correct answer. You want to be pretty familiar with what? analyzing transactions. Now in the next session, we would look at the financial statements and the financial statements will be prepared based on this summary of transactions. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, additional resources that's going to help you in your financial accounting course. Invest in yourself. Accounting is rewarding. Good luck and stay safe.